Hello, I just thought I'd show you how to use a walking foot um, on your sewing machine if it takes a walking foot and I've got a Benina 550 here and it needs a walking foot if I'm trying to do that sort of even feed which you often need when you're quilting. Um, just to do some parallel straight lines and how you'd set that up. So here I've got my walking foot still in its box here, various parts that we're not going to use today. Sometimes it comes with these extra um, foot plates with guides and things on, but we're just going to use the one that comes on it, just the basic one. We're also going to use this little funny screw bit, and we're going to use one or other of, of these um, bars as a guide. So we can set this up a little bit before we get going. So th this piece here holds this guide on. It's actually going to go through this hole that's in the foot, but it needs to be held on, so that's what this piece does. So you can just hook this on here, and you can see that as you do that, it just well it doesn't really hook on there, but it sits there. Those holes in the, the uh, metal bit line up with the holes in the foot fitting, so that this can go through there and out the other side. And then you can tighten this screw to hold that bar where you want it. So it doesn't really matter at the moment where we're going to put it, it's just sitting there. And a tape measure would come in handy for this little job. And now I'll just show you how to fit this onto the machine because they can be a little bit fiddly at times because they've got this funny little bit here, if you can see that, that needs to go over the little black screw or the screw that holds your needle in. And then your other fitting will fit in there. So different machines may be slightly different, but I think in essence they're much the same with this uh, little bit that has to go over the needle screws. So I'm just going to slide this little bit over the needle screw at the same time as bringing it into place so that I can get it into the fitting that we need to get it into. So that's all looking good. I can bring my little fitting hook down. So that's all in place now. So that's looking good. But we need to now set the measurement or the distance apart. So if we were going to quilt something in, in parallel lines that perhaps was one inch apart, with your tape measure here, um, I would put my foot down so that one of the inch markers comes right up the middle of the foot there. Loosen your screw off a little bit at the back of the foot here and then let that arm drop down and let that slide across so that it's sitting on whichever the distance is, but I'm going to make it one inch. So it's sitting on an inch marker there and then tighten your screw up again so that that's sitting there. Now you can still move that a little bit, but it should be basically fairly firm. The reason we use a walking foot um, is because it gives us an even feed from the top. Most machines have the little feed teeth at the bottom which take your fabric through but the top can slip a little bit particularly when we use a bit of batting or wadding in between our layers so what the what the top foot does is it walks the top through so you've got it feeding underneath and it's walking through at the same time so it gives you this even feed now for your first line of sewing i'm just going to do some lines on this piece of this sample here um, you may find that I've actually done a finger press line that I can follow. That won't work on a quilt or something larger necessarily. So you may find a strip of masking tape to get you started because you could go at any angle. We don't have to do just absolutely vertical lines. They could be at an angle. So if you just get something to get you started with your first line, and then this guide that sits out the side will help you with, with your um, subsequent lines of sewing. So I'm just going to pop that in the machine put that down I can see more or less my finger press line that I'm following so with a walking foot because it's feeding from the top as well it just gives you that really nice feed so you shouldn't be trying to pull it push it or anything it likes to feed it through itself so if you can just let it go it'll feed nice and evenly for you shouldn't be pushing or pulling or anything just got it on the regular stitch length. You could lengthen it a touch if you wanted to. Um, but there we've got a nice line of stitching coming up there. Put my thread out of the way. And now I want to do another line next to that, parallel to it, about an inch apart because I've set my 
guide to an inch apart. So what I now do is I put it in so that that guide will sit down on that line of sewing when I get that under the, foot, the presser foot there. And then I just sew and I just keep an eye on this line of sewing going under this guide here and it will just sew parallel to. So I'll do another line here. So again I'm lining that up so that my bar here lines up with my previous line of stitching and I just let that follow that line of stitching along here. Again, I'm not pushing, pulling or anything. The machine is just feeding that itself. And you can see it's just giving a lovely parallel result. Now, of course, you might decide you want to go in a different direction. So we could just decide to cut across here. Again, so this time I'm not using the guide particularly. I'm just sewing a straight line. So you may have wanted to draw yourself a line Put a bit of masking tape, but I'm just going to go for it. Take my pins out. Now I want to do one parallel to that. So again, I line up my previous line of stitching with my little guide arm and I just start so you can see we're getting a great result you can do all sorts of different things it doesn't seem to be pushing or pulling the fabric everything's sitting really nicely and then we just want to get a little bit more creative because we've decided that we don't want them all the same width. So we can adjust the width of, with that little screw at the back there. You might bring that in a little bit so that they're a little bit closer. Again, tighten the screw and now you could come in in between if you like. So I'm, again, I'm following this line on the right with this guide. I've altered the distance between. So you can see how you can do some fabulous effects. This is obviously very basic, but you could get very carried away just doing some straight line work using your walking foot and that guide. Now the, the walking foot kit usually comes with two guides so if you prefer to have it out the other side you would just put the other one in so that if you're getting too much bulk in here that you would obviously be going the other way and things like that so there's lots of you might be using it as a guide against another seam you might be using it against uh, more stitching there's lots of reasons why you would want to use that guide with that nice even feed that the walking foot gives you so hopefully that will just help you a little bit with doing some straight line quilting in a walking foot.